Let's continue our discussion of parametric and non-parametric tests and move on to the case of two paired groups. In this section we will discuss the paired t-test and the Wilcoxon signed ranks test. Let's start with the paired t-test. The first point to make is that paired data structures should occur by design. Thus, the decision to use a paired t-test should be made at the design stage prior to collection of the data. Pairing is used to control for known extraneous factors that might influence the result of a test. When the design incorporates pairing, we usually use a statistical test that takes pairing into account to analyze the data. Let's discuss a couple of scenarios where paired analyses are appropriate. A single group of subjects are measured before and after an intervention. Two groups of subjects are recruited into a study as pairs matched on variables such as age, weight, severity, etc. Let's examine each of these scenarios in turn, discussing the data structure and hypothesis of interest. In the first scenario, we have one group of subjects and each subject has a before and after measurement on the outcome of interest. The figure here illustrates the data structure for the first three subjects of the cohort. For each subject, there is a before measurement, an after measurement, and a difference measurement, which is simply equal to the difference between the before and after measurements. While there is interest in descriptively examining summary statistics of the before and after measurements for the cohort, the primary inferential interest is the difference measure. The key point here is that each of the difference measures is subject specific. Therefore, any extraneous factors causing between subject heterogeneity will not affect the different scores. In this way, Extraneous heterogeneity is eliminated from the sample estimate of the outcome of interest. The null hypothesis of interest is that the mean of the differences, that is, the mean difference, is zero, which would indicate that there is no mean change between the before and after measurements. In the second scenario, there are two groups of subjects with an outcome that is measured at a single point in time. As in the first scenario, the figure illustrates the data structure for the first three pairs of subjects. Subjects in each group are enrolled in the study as pairs so that within each pair, one subject is randomized to group A and the other is randomized to group B. The goal of the pairing is to ensure that each pair has a similar value of the pairing variable in order to reduce the potential impact of that variable on the outcome. As in the first scenario, the primary inferential interest is the difference measure within each pair. Focusing on the within pair differences eliminates the potential extraneous heterogeneity resulting from the impact of the pairing variable. The null hypothesis of interest is that the mean difference is zero, which would indicate that there is no difference between the groups. To further illustrate the advantage of pairing, consider the following situation. Suppose two collaborating researchers, we will call them Researcher A and Researcher B, have a cohort of 50 randomly selected subjects from a population of interest and want to test the impact of a new intervention. Researcher A proposes the following approach. Split the sample into two equal groups of 25 subjects. In the red group depicted on the left, take baseline measurements of the outcome variable. In the purple group depicted on the right, administer the intervention and then measure the outcome variable afterward. Now evaluate the impact of the intervention by comparing the means of these two independent groups. Here the null hypothesis is that the difference between the means of the two groups is zero versus the alternative that the difference in means is non-zero. Researcher B has a different idea and proposes the following approach. Do not split the sample. Instead, take baseline measurements of the outcome variable on all 50 subjects in the original cohort. Next, administer the intervention to all members of the cohort and then take a second measure of the outcome variable on each subject afterward. 
Now evaluate the impact of the intervention by examining the mean of the differences of the before and after measurements for each subject. Here the null hypothesis is that the mean difference is zero versus the alternative that the mean difference is non-zero. It seems fairly intuitive that the paired approach is superior. This approach isolates the intervention effect by examining the difference between before and after measurements within individuals. This eliminates any extraneous between subject heterogeneity that may exist and results in less variability in the outcome leading to smaller p-values and more narrow confidence intervals. The unpaired approach is valid, but is much less efficient and will, will require more subjects to achieve the same result. Let's return to the cholesterol data and use it to illustrate the calculation first of the paired t-test and then of the non-parametric analog of the paired t-test, the Wilcoxon signed ranks test. We will focus our attention solely on the case sample and their observations taken two days and four days post-attack. This data has the same structure as discussed in the first paired scenario where there is a single group with before and after measurements. Our goal is to determine whether or not cholesterol levels decreased from two days to four days post-attack. We see from the descriptive statistics that both the means and medians decreased over time. The standard deviations at both time points appear to be very similar. We can also examine descriptive statistics for the two-day and four-day differences shown here. The mean difference is 18.61, the median difference is 14, and the standard deviation of the differences is 37.11. The hypothesis of interest is that total serum cholesterol levels in cases decreased from two days to four days post-attack. Our null hypothesis is that the mean difference in total serum cholesterol levels of cases at two days and four days post-attack is zero versus the alternative that the mean difference is not zero. The t-statistic for the paired t-test is 2.65 with 27 degrees of freedom which generates a p-value of 0.01 leading to a statistically significant result. Our statistical interpretation is to conclude that the mean difference in cholesterol levels of cases at two days and four days post-attack is non-zero. For reporting and evaluating the clinical implications of the results, a similar approach to the unpaired t-test is used. Report the mean difference equal to 18.61. Report a 95% confidence interval from the, for the mean difference which is from 4.22 to 33.00. Report the p-value equal to 0.01. As you will see in the StatCrunch demo for this section, there are two different ways to calculate the paired t-test in StatCrunch, both of which will be demonstrated. Let's discuss the t-statistic for the paired t-test briefly. The general form is the same as for the unpaired t-test. The properties of the t-statistic are essentially identical to those discussed previously. The only difference is that the degrees of freedom are calculated differently for the paired t-test and are equal to the number of paired values minus 1 equal to 27. Assumptions for the paired t-test are as follows. The pairs are randomly selected from or at least representative of a larger population. Samples are paired or matched prior to the study by design. Pairs are selected independently of each other. The distribution of differences in the population is Gaussian or the sample is large enough to apply the central limit theorem. Note that in the unpaired t-test the Gaussian assumption was on the distribution of the values in each of the two groups. Here the Gaussian assumption applies only to the paired differences. In summary, to perform a paired t-test, do the following. Calculate descriptive statistics focusing on the paired differences. Produce a box plot and or histogram of the paired differences. These numerical and graphical summaries should be used to assess the Gaussian distribution assumption. Provided that assumptions are satisfactorily met, 
Next, calculate the p-value and confidence interval and summarize the test results addressing both the statistical and clinical significance of the results. This concludes the first segment of our discussion of analyzing continuous data from two paired groups. In the next segment we will discuss the non-parametric Wilcoxon signed ranks test.